All right, so we're inside the stupid controller of our third stupid project. Again, we're just using, this is a great place to test things out. Um, we've had our, our ask questions method we played with earlier. We had some other stuff. So I just made a new helper method called play with strings. And I'm calling it inside my start method so I can just use that. And so inside my lovely play with strings, we're gonna test this out. So we can actually make some work with this on the string. And so we're gonna go ahead and maximize this window for us. Okay, so in play with strings, let's make a string variable. String, and then let's give it a good name of sample. Defining just a couple quick variables ready to go, having that available for us. Everything is empty, it's, this is totally useless. As you can see, nothing's being used. They all have the uh, yellow underline of uselessness. Okay, so I just wrote um, some quick throwaway code to get this started off with. As you can see, we have two string variables to start off with, an int variable initialized to zero, our string variables are set to be nothing inside them. And then I have index is equal to sample dot index of other value. And then a system dot dot println of the index of other value in sample is blank plus index. So right now we're gonna run this. We have nothing and nothing. That these strings do exist, they, they're, they're perfectly happy. Index value is set right now, and it's, let's make this so it's, it's clearly not valid. Negative 99. There is no negative 99 index in anything. And it's also not negative 1, the default value of the index of return method. So we have some clearly not helpful pieces of information. But let's test it out. So I'll go ahead and I hit play on this project. I'm going to relaunch uh, stupid controller. And the index of other value in sample is zero. The blank string of other value is the same as the blank string of sample. That's pretty amazing. A space bar. So a single press of a space. So we have a space inside nothing. I play that one, and the space, the actual character, its index inside sample does not exist. So I look over here, position zero, the nothingness of it, the space thing at the zero spot is not there. So index of other value in sample is negative one. So because I have something and I'm looking inside nothing, it doesn't work. So that gives me a negative one. If I invert that, I'm going to take this line of code right here and that line of code right here, copy it, paste it, and I'm going to reverse the order. I'm going to do other value dot index of and pass it sample. And so now I'm reassigning the value of index to be the opposite direction. Notice how I'm changing those around completely backwards. Sample is now inverted, so it's on the parameter. Other value is now the test, the one that's testing to see when sample is inside it. And so the index of other value in sample is negative one. However, the index of sample in other value is zero. So the empty string is at spot zero. It's at the very beginning. Now, is the zeroth index, what's the zeroth spot of the string? We have a space, right? So before the space, however, we do have nothing. And so you don't wanna just check to see if blank is there because blank is always there. It's really not the most helpful thing. So let's, let's make this a little bit more complex. So I now have my sample to be some words are niftier than others. And other value has a value of blank. What is the first time we see a space inside? Four? Okay. 
zero, one, two, three, four. So we also have it right here, right here, right here, and right here. So we should see it for four, but it also has other indices that it exists at. So I'll go ahead and play this version. Four negative one, because some words, or nifty or another, is never inside that. So if I put two spaces in, are two spaces anywhere inside this? With two spaces, there's never any gap of two between the words. And so it gets negative one on both of them because this is clearly not inside that, but that is clearly not inside this. When we're doing this right here with words that we type ourselves, that we're putting right into our code, obviously we know where the actual answer is because, oh, I can just go like this and do one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is boring. But when we're using user supplied code, or excuse me, user supplied text, when users type in something and we're evaluating that text, we don't know in advance because it's, it's just gonna come in as some variable, in this case, sample. And I would not be able to actually see this stuff this stuff would all be, delete it, and cover it up. It's all invisible. We don't know what any of it is. Here. Yeah. MZ. There. Now I have no idea what's inside sample or other value. I don't know what any of those values are because I hid them from me. And so because I have no idea what those are, we don't know what's gonna come back for this. And so we can now have the idea of doing logic based on the results of this. So based on like that, I could say if parens squigs index is greater than zero or equal to zero. And I can have the idea, I can do some logic because it exists. Like perhaps change the value of a Boolean variable to be true because something's there. Or I could then check to see if something else is also true. So I could then use that idea of the second index of method, the index of with two parameters. So if Parens, and then say int index or int other index. There we go. So I now can look inside the sample for this other string and have it start after where it already found something. Because by starting at this spot, index plus one. I'm going after where I found the existing string, so it has to start at the next character or greater. So if index right here is zero at this point, then okay, I start looking at spot one. So I start looking at H. Because if it passed, then I wanna look after the current spot and look further, look to see if something else is there. So I could change a Boolean variable, or I could check further, like using this one. So the question was, if we have um, the idea of using the index of, is it case sensitive? And we can test that. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to be other sample, change it back. And inside here, I'm gonna use words with a capital W. So I have words in with a cap inside other sample, or inside other value, inside sample, I have some words. So we go ahead and, isn't it called other sample? Other value, excuse me. Other value. So I have sample.index of other value. Other value has the capitalized letter. And 
I'm going to go ahead and play this out. And I get negative 1 on both of them because words does not exist. However, as we talked about earlier, I can do the power of chaining methods. And I could do sample dot to lower case index of value other value dot to lowercase and so we can as we saw earlier I can combine methods to get a new string so this string is being forced to lowercase this string is forced to lowercase and then I'm doing the index of the lowercase version onto that lowercase version forcing them to match case completely I play that hit run and I have a value of 5. It is inside that string. Because I force it to lowercase by using the to lowercase method. So yes, it does exist. So index of, by default, works on a case sensitive basis. If I want to force it to be not case sensitive, I must add a dot to lowercase or to uppercase on both sides of the index of call. Now if I say for example, continue on that question from earlier, if I wanted to say for example look for an HTML or an XML tag inside a string, since HTML is not case sensitive, this would probably be a really good idea to do. 